So in today's video, we're going to talk about using WT Forms in Flask. So WT Forms is a Python library that you can use to make it easier to include web forms into your web app. And then Flask WT Forms makes it easier to integrate into Flask. So we'll be using Flask WT Forms, but its base is WT Forms, so we'll be using WT Forms. So the way WT Forms works is kind of similar to an object relationship mapper or, or object relational mapper or like SQL alchemy. Basically, you specify what is supposed to be in the fields, in the code, in a class, and then it will take care of some things in the background to make it easier to keep all that data connected. So in the case of a database, you specify a class with all the columns you want and it will go and actually update the database itself with these columns. Well, with WT Forms, you specify all the fields that you want in a form, and it will go and create an actual form for you to use. And it kind of keeps the, um, the, the visual form and the code connected. It's a little hard to explain, but once I started showing you, it would make much more sense. So let me get right into it. Uh, the first thing you'll need to do is install Flask. WT Forms. I already have it installed, but if you don't have it installed already, it's just pip install flask dash WTF forms. Or maybe it's just flask WTF. Let me uh, verify this now. Yeah, so it's just flask WTF and it's using WTF forms or WT forms. It's a hard to pronounce name. I see what they were going with. They wanted WTF, but it's hard to pronounce. So anyway, I have it installed already. Let me clear this. I'll do my typical Flask setup first, and then we'll get into actually working with um, WT Forms. So from Flask, import Flask. And then app is going to be Flask name. And there is one config value that I need to set up. I need to set up a secret key. This is for preventing uh, cross-site request forgery. Um, I don't want to go too deep into that because it's this video is not about web security, but uh, I'll explain a little bit once I actually use it. But we do need a secret key, otherwise this won't work. Uh, unless you disable the uh, protection that WT Forms gives you when it comes to cross-site request forgery. But we're not going to do that, we're just going to have a secret key. So I'll have um, a route on the index, and we're going to use this for both get and post because it's going to be a form. And then the index, for now it returns nothing. And then if name is main, run the app in debug mode. And then there's one other thing I need to import from Flask and that is render template. And render template, um, we'll go down here eventually. I'm going to have this index.html file be my template, but as you can see, I have nothing in there. But since I'm in here, I'll get started on that now. So basically I'm going to create a very simple HTML file. So let me just create the head. And then the body will have a form where I believe it's type, right? No. Method. Method should be post. And then there's no comma. And then the action on the form will be index. I really don't have to put that because it's the same location. But I close out the form. And now let me go to work actually, well, one more thing. So from form helpers.html, import render field. And we're going to use that in a second, but I'll explain what that is once we get there. So this is the template file that I have. Um, it's basically just nothing except a form that has no fields in it. 
So now let's get to creating this form. So with WT forms, first we have to import from flask underscore W2F. We need to import the form class. This looks familiar. This is pretty typical flask extension behavior. We import some class and then we're going to uh, use it in some way. And in addition to using flask W2F, we need to import from WT forms as well. So from WT forms, import um, string field and password field. Now, just by those names, you can probably guess what that means. That means I'm going to have two inputs, or at least two inputs. I'll have a string input, which is just a regular input, and I'll have a password field, which is just like a, a string field, except that you can't see when you're typing into the, the field. You've seen this all over the internet. You can't see passwords while you type them in. Um, so let's get started on creating this form. So I need to create a class. I'll call this class login form. And it needs to inherit from the form that I imported from Flask WTF. So I'll import or I'll inherit from that form. And then I'm going to create two fields inside of this class. So username will be one. Username is going to be a string field. And the one parameter that I'm going to give it at the moment is name or just username, I'll use the same names. And then password is going to be a password field. And I'll name it password. And if you've used SQL Alchemy, this kind of looks familiar. It's kind of the same thing as creating a database model, except in this case, you're creating a form, but it's very similar. So my form will have two fields, a string field that is a username and a password field that's called password. So to display this form, I need to pass it to uh, the template here. So let's do render template, and it's going to be index.html, and I'm going to pass it a form called form. And of course, to do that, I need to instantiate form here. So form equals login form. So that's all I need to do to uh, pass the form to the template. And to use the form in the template, uh, first let me create a submit button because the submit isn't included. So input type submit uh, value, I'll say login. So to use this, I need to use the fields from this login form. And they kind of look like this. So it'd be form.username form.password. Of course, I need to use the braces in the templates, but that will generate the username input, and if I put form.password, it will generate the password. But instead of doing that, I'm going to use this form helper. So I got this from the Flask docs. Um, this is a very useful macro that you can use when um, rendering these form fields that are generated by WT forms. So macros are just like functions, and I'll make a video on macros in the future. Um, but macros are kind of like functions for templates. So you can see the name here is render field. It takes in a field, and then it's going to display uh, certain things depending on what the property of that field that you pass in is. So it's going to display the label. It's going to say that um, the the text of whatever gets passed in is already safe, so it doesn't need to um, be escaped or anything. If there are errors, it's going to create this list of errors, and that's pretty much it. So this render field is all I need to pass in. So um, I'll do render field of form.username, and I'll do the exact same thing for the password. So, password. And then there's one special field that I have to include, and that's what I was talking about with the cross-site request forgery uh, protection. So with the secret key, it generates a token for you that will be validated whenever you submit the form. This is to prevent someone from uh, requesting something on your site when they're not actually on your site. Like they didn't, they didn't generate the form, but they're still trying to request something. 
uh, this is not safe so that's why it gives you a token to be validated for um, all the form submits so this token is simply form dot c s r f underscore token and I'll show you in the uh, view source what this looks like in a second so we have all that here and we have everything here so let me start the server and hopefully it works on the first try okay so refresh so now we see we have this username password and login uh, I only specified the login button and that render field took care of the rest so if I look at the source for this um, I'm missing something in the HTML I want to make this a list so D L and then I'm gonna go with D L. Okay, let me refresh. See if that changes anything. No, it doesn't. Well, it doesn't matter. So let's view source. So here we see we have this input with an ID and name of username, and then we have this uh, input password, and it's a type password field, and then we have the submit button I created, and then we also have this uh, cross site re request forgery token. Uh, that is this long value here that's going to get validated whenever we do validate the form but I'm not going to actually validate the form yet because I need to use something called validators so in this case I only want to use one type of validator and that's the input required validator as you can guess input required validator just make sure that whenever you passed in uh, something from the form that particular field has a value if it doesn't have a value then it won't pass the validation so import from WC forms dot validators, I believe. Um, I'm going to import input validator. And let me just show you the docs for WT forms. So um, there are different types of fields that can be used. So let's see. Where do they start? So we have Boolean fields, which are just checkboxes, date fields, decimal fields, file fields. Uh, radio fields, integer fields, select fields, and um, if you're familiar with HTML, then you're familiar with all of these. Submit field, string field, um, password field, hidden field, and then we also have these things called validators, which will uh, validate the data that gets passed in. So data required just means that the data attribute of the input is uh, populated. Email validator, make sure that it's an email address equal to means it's equal to something that you specify input required is what we're using now and then we have like IP address length MAC address number range optional all these different validators and all they do is whenever someone submits your form all these validators that you assign to the field will be called automatically and if they all pass then you can submit the form if one of them fails then it can return an error message to the uh, view so I have this input validator here and for these fields I just need to add in the validators argument which will be input validator and it's a function so you need to put the the um, parentheses there validators is going to be input validator so they're both going to be input validators alright so here I have the view function for the form and now I want to handle the submit case. So right now it will render the form regardless if it's a get or a post. But we want to handle the post situation. So Flask WTF has a handy uh, method on the form class called validate on submit. And it's a function. And it returns a Boolean. So basically what this means is if the form has been submitted, which means a post request has come in and it's valid which means all the validators on all the fields have returned true then do something if any of those things aren't true then it just renders the form again and a nice thing about this is when it goes to validate if there is an issue like say uh, the input validator is active and they don't supply input 
it will assign an error to that particular field. And then when this form gets passed into the template, it's going to be passed in with an error. And we saw here in the form helper how uh, we have this list for errors. It's going to be checking for any errors that have been passed in. So when you first load the page, there won't be any errors because you're not trying to submit it. But if you do try to submit it, and then when you validate it, there are errors, then it won't process the form, but it will go back down here to the render template, and the errors will be in the form because this form dot validate on submit will update the form uh, object with these errors. So I'll show you an example of that in a second. So if the form validate on submit, I'll just return form successfully. Uh, that's not successfully submitted. I don't know if successfully has two C's or one C. I want to say two C's, but I can't spell right now. So. Uh, if everything is okay, so if the form has been submitted and it's valid, I should see form successfully submitted. If the form is not valid, then it just goes down here. This is false, so it goes down to return template, and it will tell me all the errors. So let's give this a shot. Um, I got an error importing the input validator, so let me just make sure I got the name right input required so it's not input validator it's input required but it's basically the same thing uh, that I was trying to get at so input required and then let me just change these two to input required and see if that works okay it does so let me start again hopefully this works so I'll use Anthony as my username and my password will be just random characters because it's not actually validating the content of the password is just checking to see if the password is there. So if I hit login, it says form successfully submitted. That means that all the validators passed and I actually submitted the form. Well, let's see what happens when I don't have one of the fields. So I don't have a password field, which is required, but I don't have it. So what happens? I hit login and now it has this field is required. That's because it rendered the template again, but inside of the form, the form had errors. So when it went to render the password field um, using this render field macro, it found some errors in field.errors and it created a list of them. So if I view the source, see this field is required is in a list. And then when I go to put in a password, then it lets me submit the form. So very basic stuff, but it's also very powerful because we were able to accomplish all of this form validation without writing that much code. Typically, if you were going to do this without any kind of library helping you, you would actually have to write down all the cases that could happen. So in this case, it wouldn't be too bad because there's two fields and they are both required. So you can just check two things. But imagine you had 10 form fields and for each form field, you had four validators on them then that would be 40 things that you have to check in the code and that would be quite a bit of code but if you use WTF forms then that's just what eight more lines of code because you can put the validators all here in this array so I think WT forms is great if you're using forms um, there's a lot more that it can do of course but uh, with most of my videos I just try to introduce you uh, a module or a library in Python so you can uh, get started with it and then you can learn things on your own because these things are so useful that there's so many different things that you can do and I'd rather cover the, the entry level case to get you started with it and then you can discover all the different ways you can do it because everyone's app is going to be unique so you just have to uh, find out what needs to be done for your particular code when the time comes. So that's all I wanted to show in this video. I think I may make a video tomorrow talking more about WT forms and some of the more advanced things that you can do with it. But I think this is enough for this video. So if you have any questions about using Flask WTF or WT forms, just let me know down in the comments below and I'll answer them. If you have any requests for videos, you can also leave that down in the comments below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you like my channel, please subscribe. Thanks for watching this video and I will talk to you next time.